Douglas here from Wakenet Labs. I'd like to show off the uh, latest version of the Blizzy Bee, which is version 2.2. I have dubbed this version the Heron. This is a complete chassis overhaul, circuit overhaul, and firmware overhaul. Everything's pretty much completely different. The firmware basically started again from scratch and did things to conserve uh, system resources on the tiny chip. So. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, check out, first of all, some of the hardware differences. I've reinforced the 1 8 audio jack here at the top. Any reinforcement's great for things like this because these are like cheapy, uh, you know, Radio Shack parts. So I haven't had any problems with it or buzzing or uh, static or anything like that so far, which is awesome. The toggle switch uh, is now in place for the audio jack, and its purpose is the switch in between the audio jack and the external speaker, which is not, or internal speaker rather, which is built into the case. This is an SD-150 speaker, just like the external one that I use in all of my videos that I actually pulled out of an old phone from a thrift store. Uh, I had to use the Dremel tool and cut down the sides of it, which you can see, just to get it to properly fit in the case. It's usually a circle. Here's one here that's still intact. And I was able to saw down the sides without actually getting into the speaker element at all, which is pretty awesome. So it fits perfectly in there and I just, you know, used uh, some hot glue to hold it into place. Uh, and, the, and the final thing I added up here at the top is the supervisory signaling button, uh, which in domestic mode is the 2600 hertz button. I did this and uh, basically freed up the button that was being used here, the uh, a button for 2600 hertz because I've added different uh, modes which I'll show you in a second. On the side here we have the USB ports which is snug directly now up against the side of the case rather than using the uh, cable which was snaked through and jutting out of the side of the case which just didn't look right to me. So I actually just moved the Arduino over to the side which fit actually kind of perfect. Uh, if you could see with the speaker uh, everything's pretty much held in place. Also, it's snapped in here. Uh, the way that the USB uh, port, micro USB port, is made for the Arduino Micro, it actually has hooks around the side of it which snaps into the plastic, which is pretty much holding it in place besides the power, it's sitting on top of the power switch. Uh, the power switch is the same, 10K potentiometer for the volume is still the same, which I do actually recommend having a higher uh, resistance added. But also, too, the last final thing I'd like to show are the rubber feet. These rubber feet uh, keep it standing up, uh, especially since all of the hardware is pretty much at the top of this light plastic case made by Aventas. This is the Super Stacker Crayon Box. I got it at Walmart. It's $1.88 for this box. Uh, the feet are actually also inside, and they pretty much squish the, squish the battery into place. They're on the faceplate here, and they're also on the back here. And uh, since they're rubber, they really hold the battery in place. I mean, you can shake this thing up or drop it, and it won't uh, come out of place. Okay, so on to the firmware changes. Uh, everything is pretty much the same as far as the blue box mode goes whenever you start it up. Whenever you start it up, it boots up and it goes into domestic mode. Uh, domestic mode is basic MF. And 2600 button now at the top for supervisory signaling. And red box tones are A, B, and C. I did add the Nickelback. That was weird to say. And also, uh, for uh, recording tones for speed dial MF, uh, you hold in C now. Uh, what I also did was I borrowed the idea from DF99 to have the LED inside, the green LED, light up while in record mode, just to, you know, help you remember that you actually are in record mode. And also, a 2600 chirp happens after every button press. Again, just to remind you that you are in record mode. You hold in C again, and the light will go off, and the number is now stored in D. Okay, everything's exactly the same so far. Uh, let's switch into international mode. If you hold in A, you'll hear two tones. That's 440 hertz. The two tones uh, signify that it is now in international mode. Everything on the keypad here is exactly the same. The KP and ST are different, though. They sound different. Also, the supervisory signaling is different as well. That's 2600 hertz and 2400 hertz, a pause, and then another 2400 hertz. Uh, this is used for basically international switches and things.
One final mode is you hold in A again and you'll hear three tones. These three tones signify that the system is now actually an SS4 or system signaling number four switch mode. And this is a hell of a lot different than MF tones. This doesn't even use MF actually, it uses a binary system and each number is represented by a nibble. Uh, nibbles for bits and bits meaning one or zero. The one is represented by 2400 hertz and the zero is represented by 2040 hertz. I somehow stumbled upon this switching system, signaling system, while reading through the Wikipedia page for the blue box and I wanted to learn more about it and I found a spec sheet and then basically just coded it up really fast after reading through the, uh, the spec sheet on the signaling switch itself. Uh, this is basically, I had to figure out e how each one of these buttons is encoded and actually it's 35 milliseconds for a tone and then 35 milliseconds pause, so each one is four tones. Also, the supervisory signaling is, is a lot different as well. This is 2040 hertz and 2400 hertz at the same time, then without pause, another either 2040 hertz or 2400 hertz according to the specification. So that's all of the differences if, as far as firmware goes and hardware goes. To get it back to uh, domestic mode, just hold an A and you'll hear one tone. That just means that it's back to domestic. So let's go ahead and test the internal speaker, the ST150. Now getting this volume correctly with this being kind of like a speakerphone microphone element is rather hard. So it may take a couple of times. And there, I've successfully blue boxed the call using this blue box, the Blizzy B Heron, to the PSTN or Plain Service Telephone Network.